welcome to a wet and wintry Saturday morning here at the Hay Meadow. It is cold, I'll tell you that. So we're in the lounge room today. Chris has got the fire going and it is lovely and toasty warm. So I thought I'm gonna come and set up in here and do my unboxing of my very, very late um, Snow Queen box from the Dahlia Society. This actually arrived on the 17th of June, but I didn't get my card. So I didn't even know. It wasn't until a week later when Kristen put out a video of her um, make and I thought, oh, that's unusual for her to put that out so quickly. So I went and checked my email notification just to do the tracking and it had arrived the Monday before and I hadn't received a card. So I uh, directed Chris off to the post office on Monday of this week, but of course, you know, busy, busy. So I figure better late than never. However, before I get to this, I actually ordered something else recently. So you all know that I am a real stickler for natural products um, and especially if they're Australian made. So I went out on a limb a couple of weeks ago. I had seen a, a reel on Instagram for Avirida, which is an Australian company out of New South Wales. Um, which is all natural skincare products. So I watched the video and then I went and watched um, a reel that they had where they'd been interviewed or there'd, there'd been a segment on one of the news shows and they actually went and had a look and they mill um, their own pots. So all of the pots that they use are all natural. They're made of wood. They mill them themselves. They then etch them so that there's no um, wastage. So I thought, oh, okay, maybe I'll give it a go. So I thought we'd have a look together. Their packaging is all recycled um, boxes as well. So they do everything themselves. Everything is handmade. There's no water, there's no preservatives. So let's have a look. So it came like this in this little box with tied in string. So the packaging is beautiful. Oh, wow. Oh. Oh, the packaging so the packaging is beautiful. Oh, so wow. Oh, get that out oh, the, the packaging so this is what it looks like. So I'll just so get that out the way. I got so a deodorant and like. I think I got an eye cream. So I, I got a deodorant and I think I got an eye cream. I'm pretty I sure I got the eye cream. Now, I'm, I'm pretty just sure I got the and eye cream. I got the face, what's it called? Face and eye moisturizer. So that's the little pot there. Isn't that beautiful? Let's have a look. Oh. Oh. That's beautiful. I have got makeup on, so I'm not going to put it. Oh, that is so lovely. Oh, I really like that. Oh. Mm. The timber that they use they, is actually a weed. It's considered to be a weed here in Australia. And I think um, they said for every tree that they take out of the ground and use, they plant three natives. So that's excellent. Got to be happy with that. So that's the eye, I think it's, what's it called? Eyes up here, um, face and eye moisturizer. So we'll see how that goes. And then we have, now, I've been using natural deodorant, so I don't use an antiperspirant deodorant, um, for over a decade now. When you transition to a natural deodorant, um, it doesn't stop you from sweating, so you do still sweat, but you don't smell, so that's the that's the benefit so it can feel wet especially if you are if you are warm and sweating however you don't get that smell so so i've been using uh mugu that's the brand that i've been using for years i use all of their products um but i saw this and i thought i'll give it a go it's good to give things a go so this is i love this distinct that's what the it's called and look at that that is absolutely stunning and as i said they mill all of their own packaging so that's what it looks like and i'm not going to it's a push up from the bottom 
So I don't, oh no, oh that goes up all right. Oh look at that, there you go. Oh that's got a beautiful like a lemon balmy type of smell. Probably, well bergamot and lime because that's <laughs> what the fragrance is. So yeah, so I thought I would show you those and I'll probably give those a go and report back at some stage. I'm not going to promise um, a particular time because you know when you it, there'll be a transition period going on to those so they reuse um, cardboard so they um, etch all their own cardboard as well oh and then that's the little write up about the company so I'll give that a read at a later date and then that's just some newspaper for packaging so there we go so there's that okay now let's have a look at some fabric because I know that's what you're really here for. So as I said this is the Dahlia Society's um, Snow Queen. I, I have seen the fabric because obviously um, Kristen put out her video um, and I didn't realise that she was, um, that that's what it was. Um, so I just started playing it and of course she's wearing the gorgeous fabric in the video. Um, so that's my own fault because she did have a big flower over the front on the video, on the um, thumbnail. So I didn't see it from there. Um, but, you know, oh well. Okay, so here we go. Dahlia Society. Nice big box. Let's get Russell back involved. You can probably hear the fans up on top of the heater. So we have a couple of fans that just sit on top of the heater and they start spinning and, you know, produce, um, spread the warmth. So here we are. Oh, look at that. Look at that little sticker there with the snow, with the, what is, what's it called? Snowflakes, that's what it is. Okay, so we have, oh, we have two meters of a Poppy Euro cotton spandex soft sweater knit. Oh, and matching cuffing. Nice. And, oh, 30% off the Helen's Closet Elliot sweater. Oh, I better go and have a look at that one. Okay, let's have a look. What have we got here? Beautiful pink packaging. Oh, Another gorgeous big card. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? And then there's a little tag on the bottom, which is, you are beautiful. Okay. The Snow, oh, okay. So the Snow Queen, Dali Society, 2024. Oh, wonderful. So we'll start off with the edibles because you know how much I love those. We have the oh, Spring Hill Farm Cookies and Cream Slice. I've mentioned this before, I love these. And they sell them at my work. So my little drawer goodie um, box normally has some of those in them. And then we have a Jarrah Hot Chocolate. Yum. <laughs> I'll probably be having these soon. Okay. Oh. Oh. We've got a bath fizzer. So it's a bath bomb. Galaxy sparkle. Look at that. Can you see the sparkle in there? You can see the ring lights. Obviously the lighting in the lounge room is like a softer. Because that's what you have in your lounge, isn't it? Okay. So our Gutterman thread. And it's a Mariflex. Yes, it is. Is a white. 800 just in case you're playing along at home 800 is the number there so let's have a look at this I'll save the cuffing oh look at that that is beautiful now it's I guess you could it could look like a um, animal print like a leopard but it's got like a beautiful um, like rusty browns, dark brown, and then there's that beautiful purple in there too. That's gorgeous. I really like that. And I love poppy fabrics. The quality is just superb. So there, as I so there's two meters of this, so that's plenty for making a jumper. 
or a cardi. How gorgeous is that? Now, the cuffing that I got, and I don't know if there were different colours, but I got this gorgeous purple. So that is going to go absolutely beautiful with that fabric. How lovely is that? How nice is that? That's gorgeous. And it's lovely brushed inside. Now it's not a thick, it's not like a fleece. It's not a fleece back. It's got lovely stretch both ways. Um, so that's going to be gorgeous. Now I wonder, two metres. I wonder if I could make another one of these. So you saw me doing my little twirl at the start there. This is the Pattern Emporium um, Go To Fit and Flare dress. So last week, at last not Friday gone, the Friday before, um, wanted to make a dress. We were going out for lunch with some friends the following day on Saturday. Uh, and I had just seen, or in the morning I had seen, I think it was that morning, Kristen's um, latest video where she had made a uh, combination of the fit and flare and another, another pattern emporium. And I can't remember what one it was at the moment. Anyway, it was a mashup because the first dress she'd made she wasn't happy with, so she, you know, did a mashup of two of the patterns and it looked fabulous. And I thought, oh, that's the sort of dress that I've been wanting to make. Something nice and easy, yet a bit snuggly for um, for work perhaps and weekends and that sort of thing. So, of course, I had to make a toile because, you know... I just, I still don't trust myself. Um, and I'm glad I did in this instance because I haven't actually made a lot of jersey stuff. I actually don't ha make a lot of stretch knit things. I think it's the whole, there's a bit of a fear around the negative ease and, you know, if you make it too small, then it's too bad. Too bad, you're done with. So I'd rather make something a bit big and have to alter it. Um, and that's what I've done in this. So this is the Pan Emporium Go To Fit and Flare, which I said just three seconds ago. Uh, I've made it in the longest version, um, which is which is literally ankle length. It's just it's on my shoes, so I love it. It's fabulous. It's unhemmed, so neither the <laughs> neither the cuffs or the hem is actually done. I'll see how it goes when I wash it. If it doesn't roll. I may not hem it. Who's going to know? No one's going to know. Um, but it's beautiful. I made the three-quarter sleeve. I made the high front and the high back in the neck. Um, and it's got a band. So it's got a little band there. Um, it is a oh, my little tie belt. This is just a fabric tie belt from something else. So it has got a waist seam. I did consider raising the waist uh, about an inch, but I haven't. And I'm probably glad that I didn't because obviously the weight of the skirt pulls it down a little bit. Um, but it's beautiful. I love it. Um, I then wore it to lunch the next day. Chris thought I was mad on Friday night when I said I'm going to make a dress for tomorrow's lunch. Um, yeah, he just rolled his eyes and yeah, <laughs> so I got up. Um, early, I think I got up at like six on Saturday morning, out to the um, out to the room. I'd cut the pattern out. I'd printed and taped the pattern together and cut it out the night before. So then Saturday morning, I just had to cut out the fabric and sew it up. It's totally sewn on the overlocker. First time I've done that. Once again, you know, worried about you know what if it falls apart. It's not. <laughs> it's totally fine. Um, and I made it in this. Um, I think this type of print is actually called a toile print. Uh, I've had this in the stash for a long time. I used the pattern for, I wanted to make the longest version. It called for three meters. I had three meters, 3.5 of this. Um, I got it on a spotlight sale a couple of years ago. Um, you know, it was on the cheap rack. Buy the whole bolt, you get a bit of a discount. So I ended up with just over three and a half meters so I've still got some left um, and I absolutely love it the girls that we went to lunch with both of them really liked it and I wore my black pilar jacket so I had to tell them that I'd made that as well so I felt a bit 
bit special, bit flash. Um, so yeah, so once I have finished this video, um, I've got to make some lunch and then I'm heading out to the sewing room and I'm going to whip up a couple more of these in different lengths, different co uh, necklines. I might do a long sleeve, I'm not sure. I much prefer a three quarter, even in the cold, even in the winter. I'd rather pop a cardigan on than have um, my arms totally covered up. Um, but yeah, so that's what I'm doing for the rest of today. So there we are. That is the Dahlia Society Snow Queen box for June. Um, and some little extras that I got. So I hope you've got something exciting on. I can hear that the rain is starting again. We have a lake out the back where we've taken up some papers. So uh, hopefully Freya doesn't discover that because she quite likes the water. So with that, I shall say see you in the next video and I am off to make some dresses. Bye. Hello, I'm back again. So I thought I would quickly just take a look at the Helen's Closet Elliot top because I hadn't heard of that one before. Um, so I've just jumped online and I have a feeling that I'm probably going to make one of those. So it's a tunic style um, long sleeve and I think this will be absolutely perfect. Such a fabulous choice, um, Kristen. Thank you. That is absolutely wonderful. I quite like... Um, whether it be leggings and boots or jeans, um, like um, skinny jeans and boots um, and a tunic top in the winter time. That's very much my style. Um, so I have a feeling that's going to be on my cutting table very soon as well. So I just thought I would pop back because I didn't go into the Elliot because I didn't really know what which one it was. I'm actually going to go and check that one out more. So this had better go in the wash better get the clothes errors out here so that I can get my fabric dry. See you later. Hello, I'm back and this is something like totally left field for me. Uh, I've just finished filming uh, the unboxing for the Snow Queen box from the Dahlia Society and I included another little product in there that I'd bought offline. So um, I thought while I'm outside of the box, Maybe I'll show you what I'm making for lunch today. Totally random, totally left field. Hey, you know, <laughs> why not? Welcome to the Hay Meadow Kitchen. So, um, as I said in my video, it's winter at the moment. So it's cold and it's windy and it's rainy outside. And um, that's always good for a hot lunch, isn't it? The other night I made, and I, this is a regular thing for most people, I think. I only found out about it a few years ago. Um, however, it's steak cooked in the oven with French onion soup. I know, it sounds a bit random if you've never heard of it before, but it's really easy and it's totally delicious. So I'm gonna angle the camera down and I'll show you what we're making. <laughs> so here we go, we've got some steak. Uh, we bought a big piece of um, steak in one piece and Chris sliced it up. We've got a couple of French onion soup mixes and we've got some foil and an oven baking tray here. So I've currently got the oven set uh, warming up at 180. So first up, I'm going to line the tray with some foil. I'm going to be careful because I don't want it to split or um, break, so just lining that. So I'm gonna grab one of my packets and I have a kitchen rustle, because we all have a kitchen rustle. And I'm just going to sprinkle This on the bottom. I'm only using two packets um, because I'm doing a lot. Normally I would just use one. We had this for dinner the other night and I only used one packet. But I'm going to be doing a few of them here. So I'm going to open this up. 
I'd say we'll have Sia and Freya around here in a moment. And I'm just going to line a few up. Sea has just appeared. That will leave us a couple yet. Okay. Get our second French onion soup. Thank you, Russell. You've been <clears throat> a wonder. And I'm just going to sprinkle that over the top. You can probably do this with other types of soup mixes, I imagine. Okay, so now I'm going to cover that right over, tuck it right in. I should have done my other piece of foil first, but I didn't. I usually use a couple of pieces. Because we want to keep all that juice in there with the soup mix. There we go. We'll tuck that in. And now we're going to pop that in the oven uh, and I'll pop it on 180 for an hour. So I will show you what it looks like when I get back. And just like that, we are back. An hour has passed. So I've got some potato steaming. I've got some marifat peas. If you've never heard of marifat peas, um, the English have them um, they are giant peas so we have these um, in the pantry and they are brilliant so I am going to turn off that's the um, exhaust fan you can hear over the steaming potatoes I'm going to turn off the spuds and mash them I'm going to make some gravy and I don't know maybe everyone does this but a bit of a hack if you make instant gravy now I always steam my veg Oh, I didn't set that up very well, did I? So I'm just going to take that off. And I'm going to use my potato water for my gravy. So I'll just let that sit and soak for a little bit. That's my marifat peas in the microwave. Now, we normally do all fresh vegetables, so the marifats are only because they, you don't see them here fresh. I don't even know if they do, I don't know, I don't know. They're very big, you'll be astounded when you see them. Looks like it might need a little bit more. And I usually do this with whatever I'm steaming, so whatever the water is under the steamer is what I will use for my gravy. That there to soak for a bit to mature. Get the old masher out. Okay, now. No judgments on my mashed potato, please. We've got some butter. You make your mashed potato however you like to make it. But it's Saturday afternoon lunch and this is how I'm making mine. So you do you and I'll do me. So we've got some potato, uh, some butter. We're going to chuck some cream in there. And off we go.
So we've been in the oven for an hour, just over an hour. Now you can make this with um, lamb chops, any type of steak, um, probably any type of meat. I've not done it with chicken, I've done it with most other things. And we're going to gently fold that back. And voila. Look at that, absolutely delicious. Grab our peas. And uh, I'll show you the uh, results in a moment. just beautiful so I'm gonna pop my gravy on and I'll let Chris do his own if it's not swimming in a sea of gravy there's something wrong so there we go so there we go that's what we're having for lunch today on this very uh, wet and wild day it's not really wild I shouldn't say that a bit of an exaggeration. It's definitely wet and rainy um, outside. So we're going to enjoy a lovely warm lunch. And um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed that. Let me know if you give it a go because it is totally delicious. See ya. <laughs>